footsteps behind you as you enter the woods. Night draws back its cave. Night illumines your path. Open your eyes. Listen. Welcome to Dark Softly Tales. Dark stories for dark hearts. I'm Mav Sky. Good evening and welcome to your nightmares, where we like to keep things dark and dreamy at Dark Softly Tales. I'm your host, Mav, and thank you for joining me for part two of The China Doll. If you are brand new, please go back and listen to the very first episode so that you can more easily follow the story of The China Doll. And if you are a return listener, thanks so much for coming back. In the last episode, you may recall that Sable and her mother discuss the strange symbol on the outside of the box. There are three vines carved, one on top of the other, representing heaven, mankind, and earth. This is a symbol from the I Ching, a form of Chinese divination from an ancient text called the Book of Changes. Think of it as the Chinese version of tarot cards, and yet it is so, so much more. In fact, the ancient text that discussed the I Ching is actually based in quantum physics, time jumping, and also nestled in the philosophy of the yin and yang. Honestly, this is a rabbit hole that I fell into when I started writing the story, and it took a week to pull myself out and get focused again. I found myself getting sucked back in. I'm a Gemini, so when I find fascinating information like this, boom, my mind is gone for a while. But let me pull myself back to Earth here and get back to the symbology on the box. If I were to be straight with you, the symbol that would best suit this box would have been a straight line on top for heaven, a broken line in the middle for humanity, and then another straight line on the bottom representing Earth. The reason for the break in the line in the middle is to allow the energy from heaven and earth to funnel through mankind like a vessel. In this story, the doll is much like this kind of vessel. For better or for worse? Let's find out. With that said, settle in, hold your dear ones close, and never mind those scratch marks on the bedroom door. Take my hand and hang on tight as we journey into the dark softly. My dear daughter Sable, I purchased this china doll at a store that seemed more ancient than time. They carry relics of the past, and this one is special. It is said that Empress Wu had played with this very doll as a child, and it later brought her good luck, as she was the very first empress of China. There are instructions that the shop owner gave me. Number one, put the china doll away every night. I assume to keep her in mint condition. And number two, do not make wishes around the china doll. An old superstition. I've got another surprise for you and your mom. By the time you read this note, I'll be on my way home. I should be there very soon, within the week. Love you, Daddy. Sable was standing and could hardly contain herself. Daddy was coming home. He was actually coming home. Mommy, she cried, running past the china doll, who appeared to be smiling at her, and into the kitchen. Mother was spoon-feeding Jeffrey, and he was spitting it out on his bib. Mother touched up his face with a wet dishcloth as Sable came bursting in. What is it, hun? Daddy's coming home. She paused and turned to Sable. What do you mean? Read the letter. She shoved it into her mother's face. Read it! Her mother set down the spoon and took the letter, her eyes racing over the words to the very end. She put her hand over her mouth. It looked like she was about to cry. Sable put her arms around her. Are you all right? I thought you would be happy. Her mother squeezed her back. I am, Sable. I am. Well, we've got some work to do before your father is back, young lady. 
Yes, ma'am, said Sybil. For starters, you're going to have to clean your room, including under your bed. Sable's heart fell at the including under your bed part, but she tried not to show it. There must have been a month's worth of laundry beneath her bed, but that was okay. She would pretend that she was a minor and dig it all out. Plus, then she'd have clothes again. Sure I will. And I will take care of the rest. Mother gave another spoonful of stew to Jeffrey, who spit it out immediately. Sable asked, Will you make his favorite pie? Mother laughed, Of course I will. Sable smiled back at her. I'll get started on my room. Oh, no, you won't. Not tonight. It's your bedtime. But, Mom, I'd like you to go brush your teeth now, Sable. Sable knew it was no good arguing with her mother. She turned out of the kitchen and passed through the living room to get to the hall. The china doll no longer smiled. Sable scrunched up her face and thought, and continued on down the hall to the bathroom, where she brushed her teeth and slipped on her nightdress and went into her room. She pulled down her favorite book of Grimm's fairy tales and read until she heard her mother close Jeffrey's bedroom drawer, then walked into Sable's room. She smiled at Sable and asked what she was reading. Sable set the book aside. It's called The Juniper Tree. Oh. Mother sat down on the edge of the bed and picked up the large book. I don't recall that one. What's it about? Sable rubbed her eyes and said, It's about this little kid. His mom dies, and he gets a new stepmother who doesn't like him. And one day, she tells the little boy to get an apple out of a wooden trunk with a sharp iron latch. And when he bends inside the trunk to get it, the stepmother slams the lid on his neck and his head pops off. Mother frowned. Good heavens, that story is in here? She flipped through the pages. Sable said, Then she cuts him up to pieces and boils him in a stew and then feeds him to his father for dinner. Mother shut the book quickly. Oh my, Sable, let's not read this one anymore unless I'm with you. I think that's a little too scary before bedtime. Sable nodded in agreement. The story did frighten her. She wondered if her mother died and her dad got remarried, if the stepmother would cut her into pieces for a stew. She thought of the stew that she ate earlier and shivered. Mother said, Let's think about happy thoughts now. Like Daddy coming home? Yeah, like Daddy coming home. Mother smiled, tucked the blankets around Sable, and kissed her on the forehead. Good night, Sable. Night, night, Mommy. Her mother picked up the dirty clothes that Sable had left on the floor and turned off the light. And at the doorway, she asked, Would you like the door open or closed tonight? Usually, Sable liked the door open. But tonight, with a china doll on the bookshelf, she preferred the door closed. Shut, please. All right. The nightlight should come on as soon as I close the door. Sable nodded and buried her face into the pillow as the door shut. And the nightlight came on, just like her mother had said. She briefly remembered that there were freshly baked cookie chips on the counter, and she hadn't gotten to eat one. Her tummy rumbled, but it was no use. Her mother wasn't going to let her get out of bed to eat cookies. She sighed, then decided to clear her mind of all thoughts and focus on one only. Her dad was coming home, and she could imagine the big bear hug that he'd give her, and then they would go to the beach, and he would fish while she collected the prettiest seashells in the world. She smiled and let sleep cover her like a warm blanket. Sable awoke to noise at her door. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Was her mom trying to get in? Scratch, scratch, scratch. Perhaps little Jeffrey had awoken and somehow found a way out of his crib? Scratch, scratch, scratch. Perhaps daddy had come home. Scratch, scratch, scratch. But as her sleepy mind awoke, she realized that the noise wasn't coming from her mother or Jeffrey. And she didn't think Daddy was home yet. But it sounded awfully familiar. Scratch, scratch, scratch. She sat up in bed, grateful for the nightlight, and the scraping noise stopped. She laid back down and stared at her door. 
willing for the noise to happen again, but as her eyes grew tired and she grew warm inside the covers once more, she became convinced that a mouse was nibbling in the walls. She wasn't sure if she wanted to tell her mother about it, because she might buy mouse poison, and Sable did not wish death upon any mouse, and she especially didn't want him to get flushed down the toilet to the afterlife. She fell asleep, propped up on her pillows, facing her door. Sable awoke to her mother's screams in the hallway. Sable leapt out of bed and tossed open her door to find her mother clutching Jeffrey, tears streaming down her cheeks. Sable said, Did you see it? Did you see the mouse? Mother soothed the baby in her arms while frantically looking around. What are you talking about? Did you see? Then, Oh, oh my. No, I just heard it. Sable followed her mother's gaze back down to Jeffrey's door. But then she wished she hadn't. Three long marks were clawed into the wood of the door. Oh! She reached for her mother and hugged her robe. Can mice do that? No, I don't think so. Mother shook her head and Jeffrey leaned his head against her shoulder and yawned. But maybe, maybe a rat could. Sable unraveled herself from her mother and walked over to the door and sat on her knees. She ran her fingers along the deep indentations. Her mother joined her. Granny used to tell me stories about the rats in New York. They can do all sorts of things that I never guessed that they could do. So, I suppose it could be. Sable nodded, but inside she felt scared. Anything big enough to make these kind of marks on the door wasn't something she felt good about having in the house. A mouse was cute and liked to eat popcorn. But rats? Oh, she'd heard Granny tell her stories before. And sometimes, they even ate human children. Mother said, I'll buy rat poison at the store today, and that will be the end of that. Mother rushed out of the hall, and Sable followed her. She carried Jeffrey into the kitchen, and Sable paused by the china doll. She was in a different position than the one that her mother had put her in last night. The doll was no longer grasping the pole, but standing in front of it. She wrapped one arm about her waist, her hip tilted to the side. She lifted her other arm across her chest, her fingers resting under her chin, as if she were considering a very important decision. Her eyes locked onto Sable's. Sable whispered, Dolls aren't supposed to move. The china doll didn't move or whisper back, but her eyes glistened as if she were amused. Mother entered the room with Jeffrey on her hip. Cream of wheat is on the stove, and I'll make you a slice of toast if you like. Mother bent to look at the china doll. Oh, did you move her? Sable shook her head. Uh Uh-uh. You must have been forgotten. Dolls don't move by themselves, honey. She laughed, but Sable didn't laugh with her. She glanced at her mom. He was looking at the hallway, a dark look on her face. She turned back to Sable, met her eyes, and said, I sure wish your father was home already. Sable said, I wish Daddy was home too. And as the words were out of her mouth, she gasped and put her fingers over her lips. What is it? asked Mother. I made a wish. So did I. Why the look? Because Daddy's letter said not to make wishes around. She eyeballed the china doll, and her mother followed her gaze. Honey, that's called superstition. Back in the old days, people believed that objects held power. We know better now. Sable folded her arms. If Daddy wrote it, then I believe it. Mother sighed. Then unwish it. Sable scrunched her face and thought about this. She closed her eyes and tried to unwish her wish, but as hard as she tried, she simply could not. She wanted her daddy home now with all her heart. Anyway, come and eat breakfast before it gets cold. Sable followed her mother out of the living room, glancing only once back at the china doll, frowning. There was more than just one instruction on daddy's letter, and that night, She'd be sure to follow it, just in case. After dinner, they went for a walk in the crisp autumn air. Night fell heavy with fog, 
and they walked along the empty street. Sable collected pine cones and pretty leaves in a basket, and Mother pushed Jeffrey in the stroller. It had been a strained day as Mother scrubbed, vacuumed, and swept cobwebs from the ceiling. She searched for tiny holes in the walls of Jeffrey's bedroom that a rat could get through, but didn't find any. Afterwards, they had gone to the grocery store and brought groceries along with a box of rat poison. Her mother put it behind Jeffrey's crib as soon as they returned and warned Sable sternly about it. She set to work making dinner while Sable entertained Jeffrey on the kitchen floor. And then they both had had baths and it was finally time for bed. Sable had avoided looking at the china doll for the whole day and closed her eyes every time she walked past it. Once she almost tripped over a baby toy but she was able to catch herself and she crawled the rest of the way. She knew that she would have to see it tonight if she followed her dad's instructions, and she would do it no matter what. She brushed her teeth while Mother walked into Jeffrey's room and began rocking him to sleep. After Sable finished, she crept out to the living room and looked at the doll. It wasn't on the stand anymore. It sat on the edge of the bookcase, one finger with its crimson nail lifted in the air as if saying, No, no to what Sable was about to do. She took the box it had come in from the lower bookcase shelf and set it beside the china doll. She drew off the lid, and when she looked down at the doll, both hands clutched the edge of the bookshelf, and the doll's head turned up to hers. She could see a red-hot anger burning in those dark, dark irises. Sable gulped, then quickly picked up the doll, its nails catching on the wood of the bookcase, and put her in the box. She straightened out the doll's body a little, and then slammed the lid on top. Afterwards, Sable realized that she was sweating, and she went to the bathroom for a drink of water. She felt much better after the water. She could hear Jeffrey fussing in his bedroom, the soothing voice of her mother as she comforted him, and Sable knew that her mother would be a while before putting him down tonight. She slipped on her nightgown, closed her bedroom door, and climbed into bed. She felt better knowing that the china doll was in the box. She hadn't been able to unwish her wish, but as long as the doll was inside the box, she figured it didn't matter anyway. Sable felt safe, and her daddy would be home soon. Thanks for tuning into the show. If you've enjoyed today's story and want to know more, check out Mavs' website at darksoftlytales.com and click on the podcast tab. Like Mav on Twitter at darksoftlytales or join her Facebook page at Mavsky. Please remember to follow and leave a review on iTunes to keep the podcast going and growing. 